YVBI started broadcasting 44 years ago, one of our um, early arriving groups was the Dutch, um, and one of the head leaders of the Dutch community uh, wanted to form a radio program and he went to 5ka back in those days and they gave him a, an hour a week on 5ka. Back in those days uh, when we first started the reason for ethnic radio was to inform the listeners of those ethnic groups of what was happening back home. You know because they'd lost contact they'd come out on ships or came out as refugees came out as ten dollar uh, poms or whatever, you know, they, they came out here but they missed home and they had no way of finding out what was going, you know, it was before internet. So that was sort of like the nucleus for ethnic radio and from there more people got to know about it. And then there were another four groups, uh, Polish, Italian, uh, Greek, they came on board and we gained access uh, to time on, um, and we're going back to 74, 75 now, um, to, uh, on Radio Adelaide, or 5UV as it was back in those days. And we just sort of, um, we had those five programs, had an hour a week, and yeah, it was just to bring those communities uh, here in South Australia information about what was happening at home. That sort of evolved and then People from other nationalities sort of said, hey, we want to be part of this, you know, we've got communities here in South Australia. So 5EBI found a little premise on North Terrace, not far from Radio Adelaide, and just had a one-room studio and they just started, started broadcast and they got up to about 33 different nationalities coming on board, somebody had come on board quite quickly. I mean, we're talking 1975, and then we branched out, and because it got bigger and bigger and bigger, um, we needed bigger premises, we needed more studios and those sorts of things. So, you know, we acquired this place here. This was just an old warehouse, and volunteers put the place together. They put in studios, put in, you know, all the eggshell cartons as soundproofing, and, you know, so it's, it was a real um, community project that got off the ground. Sure, in those early days, there was some government funding which, which helped us um, you know, buy the premises. We bought this premise here and we were able to branch out and buy the building at the back. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. The great moment in the history of Radio 5 EBR <coughs> Ethnic Broadcasters Incorporated. Today, not only have we moved to our new studios, but also in a few moments time we'll be turning on to stereo. This is a perfect and wonderful example of what can be done by community groups getting together and helping themselves and working. And I'd like to say congratulations to all of you and to all of the communities. You know, that's why I'm so proud of what makes South Australia what it is. Today, we have 44 different groups. Um, some come, some go, new ones, new and emerging groups. So at the moment, we have 44 member groups um, who make up the radio station. They are our stakeholders, they're our shareholders, so everything that we own belongs to the groups. That's the way we've structured it and uh, we call it the EBI family. It will always be the EBI family. My name is Jerry Paulus. I'm involved in the Dutch radio here in Adelaide by five EBI since um, 1977, 1978, somewhere there. I came in the late 60s to uh, Adelaide, to Australia, but um, um, it just happened to somebody else, an accountant, who said to me, maybe you can help a little bit out in the Dutch radio, uh, maybe to type a, a letter, that was it. So uh, I met the people then uh, at that time and they said, oh, it would be good to have you in the team as well. So that, in that respect, I started off. <laughs> you could say in the beginning of the years we were involved and uh, supported by uh, the Dutch radio in Hilversum in the Netherlands. They used to send us all kinds of uh, materials that we could use in the programs, also the songs, and that was the way to get 
news from the Netherlands. It was very hard to get news in any different way. The KLM uh, at that time was flying on to Adelaide. Uh, we sometimes got there. Um, papers that were newspapers that were left over on the plane and we could use that for news. Well, we have our elderly people who are not uh, involved in uh, internet and computers, so they really uh, uh, feel they belong to the program as well, you know, and they can also request songs and, uh, if they want to. Uh, so uh, we play very old and maybe very new, <laughs> yeah, both ways. Gina Pahori Kupila Kos Slovencia Putice od Pustaja Pet EBI FM za Pet Dolario. Hvala. My name is Fuad Andraus. Uh, and I'm from a, uh, an Egyptian background, but of course Australian. I came here when I was young, uh, at the age of 20. Uh, I work, I'm the vice chair for, of the uh, radio station, and also I have three programs uh, here at the station. Well, for FBI, since I came here into Australia, we had a gentleman by the name of Shukri George, and Shukri is the one who started the program uh, and he's done it for 34 years. When Shukri retired, we just wanted to continue the, uh, uh, the program because it was very, um, well, not so much successful, but it, it just uh, uh, put us together and uh, with the mother uh, land and uh, so people can uh, listen to music and uh, news from Egypt and so on. So it was a great things to have to, uh, between us and uh, our motherland. So I decided to have a go and I started that program about seven or eight years ago. Two of them are in English. Uh, it's only one in Arabic, which is, when I say one in Arabic, the two hours in Arabic. Uh, Saturday afternoon and Monday night in Arabic. Uh, the Football Plus, which is our sports program, it's done two hours in English. Um, and also the uh, Saturday uh, International Rendezvous, once a month, three hours in English, yes. But the songs, different, all over the world. We play the song that you want, because we've got the resources and we straight away get it, bang, and uh, play it. Uh, so that, that's, that, that's a good uh, thing that we, we enjoy as well because uh, there's four people on the program. So because we have two telephones going. My program, I do talk a lot about, uh, they have a lot of announcement. Uh, announcements is coming, you know, like uh, uh, if they want, they have a, a function happening. If there is, uh, the Minister of Immigration is coming, so we talk about it. Uh, if there is a, a speech or something, they give it to us. I was privileged to have the Consul General and the Ambassador of Egypt to visit our station. And uh, I did a few interviews with them and they were very successful. So we use this radio station as uh, a method of advertising or telling people uh, what's coming up. And I'm proud that I can give back to my country something if I can help. Uh, and, uh, you know, if I can do something that it, it will uh, help and benefit the uh, community, that's great. What you say? I love song now, huh? <laughs> Big up yourself, man. No, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. A straight out to Australia, Adelaide, man. Representing every time.
Hi, I'm David Sabine and I do the morning program which we call Foreign Affair. So I've got lots of affairs every morning, Monday to Friday, 9 to 11. Uh, but I, uh, the reason we use that title is it's a, a foreign affair of music. Music from all around the world, uh, different backgrounds, different cultures. And I try to blend a nice, bright, happy sound uh, with me in between. So they, uh, the music comes from anywhere and everywhere and we throw in the odd interview if someone's in town that or a politician wants a bit of publicity, which is often the case. And of course, any uh, entertainers uh, would we'll grab them. And it's just a general interest program of a couple of hours every morning. So it's a huge cross section. Well, this morning I had a, a caller from Estonia, one from an Italian listener, uh, an Australian fella, uh, and uh, one Hungarian, uh, amongst other calls. Because other programs on 5EBI are hour by hour, specific uh, language programs. Uh, mine is English speaking, although I do try and do the titles in language, and sometimes it's more of a comedy show than, than reality, uh, if I don't get the accents right. It's the listeners from all, all ethnic groups, and uh, having had a commercial background uh, for many years, a lot of my old-time Australian listeners, or my old commercial listeners, have come across as well, which is lovely. Most rewarding, it's just a different me or a different music, and I try to blend it all together. We've got an extensive library uh, of a lot of ethnic uh, music uh, in groups, and so I go to the Croatian and look at the cover, that looks fairly modern, and I'll, I will sample tracks, just a, a, a few, you know, 20, 30 seconds, to make sure it's light, bright, happy, because I don't really know the language uh, that uh, uh, they, they sing. Uh, and uh, then I'll go to the Austrian and then, then the German, to the Italian and take a CD from every area. And so I, I do about 15, 20 songs per morning. Uh, and so I walk in with a stack of CDs and, and uh, hope for the best. Sometimes it falls apart. Uh, if I may tell you a, a good little story, I was playing a Dutch song and it was a long title, and Dutch is such a hard language, you've got to dribble in the right spot. <laughs> and uh, so, I, I, uh, so I tried this title in Dutch language, and uh, then play, started to play the song. I had a phone call from a Dutch lady, very broad accent. She said, David, uh, enjoying your pro. Oh, thank you very much. She said, do you know what the song's about? And I said, no. She said, uh, um, it's a story of the woman finding out her husband has been unfaithful, and she's chasing him around the kitchen with a carving knife to cut off whatever. And I, and I just felt so bad. This lady had rung me. And I said, look, I'm so sorry. She said, doesn't matter. She said, if you don't know Dutch, you don't know what they're singing about, because it was a light, bright, happy song. Uh, she said, if you know Dutch, we're having one hell of a laugh. So sometimes it falls apart, but I did put a big line through that track for, for future reference. But uh, I try and keep it light, bright, happy, and, and, uh, and so that everybody from any group or any background can, can enjoy. I'm Guillaume Vetu and uh, I am the Program and Production Coordinator at uh, 5EBI. I was born in France and I've, I'm a French-Australian citizen and so I've been in Adelaide in Australia for I think 25 years now. So I've been involved with uh, community uh, radio stations around Adelaide for quite some time now. Uh, I was first at 3D Radio I think it was around the late 90s, early 2000s. And I was actually on the board at 3D Radio where we moved uh, to a 100% volunteer uh, station. And that was quite, quite a task. Um, and then uh, after that, I pursued other uh, interests. And then I went back to community radio uh, around the 2010 mark. And I was with uh, Radio Adelaide. I followed through that as well for a little while. I had a French program there and uh, I approached 5EBI uh, yeah, about three years ago. Just came here to, to do some volunteering because I was interested. And, uh, and then very quickly I got a job. Because um, we didn't have a, a French community at 5EBI uh, to present a French program, uh, but me being French and uh, being a lover of French music, uh, we just thought, oh, I can, I can just put together a, a program. 
And so that's what we do every Wednesday morning from 78. We have a, a French program, which is music based. And then we play some informative messages. Uh, and uh, we, we have a project of actually making it a uh, proper uh, French community program uh, with uh, several presenters and uh, that sort of stuff. We're still working on that. Four minutes from now, the Portuguese program. My name is Juan Paolo Legaspi. Uh, I started here as a broadcaster doing the Filipino program. I got involved with uh, helping out with the board and I'm currently the chair for 5EBI. I was involved uh, helping my mom who's been involved with, this, with the program for about ooh, at least 20 years. My mom came through the 1980s wave. Um, it was a lot of working professionals that came through. So I'd helped her uh, do some research for the new segments that we used to do, or we still do. Um, so I would use uh, text-based browsers, uh, Netscape Mozilla, and uh, look up different web pages around the Philippines, news articles, and uh, help mum collate them and would rebroadcast them to the radio. I still am not fluent in Filipino. So the reason why I signed up was to force myself to talk in Filipino, or more specifically Tagalog, which is uh, the, the very specific dialect and um, my mum helped me go through this phase of uh, having to research the news and sometimes the articles would be in English and I would have to manually translate it into Tagalog but it helps you preserve your language and it also gives you glimmer, glimpses of um, your own culture and that went a long way of, um, I don't know, maybe it was the timing in which I participated but especially when you're going through high school, that awkward kind of formative years, very helpful in keeping you grounded. We have about 20 different odd volunteers that contribute to Raja Pilipino. Uh, we have a rotating roster. Um, that's, that's with the current existing group. Uh, I'm also working on a, a younger demographic and we're about five to 10 people that are on a rotating roster as well on Friday nights. And, um, but predominantly the uh, age group is people that come in through the 1980s wave. So we have three shows um, here at 5 EBI. One of our time slots is probably arguably the most iconic time slot, which is uh, Friday nights at 9 o'clock till 9.30. Yeah, the time slot's always been taken by the founder of Radio Pilipino. Uh, his name's Dr. Dante Wanta. Um, he's a local legend, local icon, and a man that you know, I'm, I'm quite uh, blessed to say that he's my mentor as well. Uh, he's held that <laughs> spot for about 40 years and um, he announced his retirement late last year. Uh, Dr. Wanta kind of tailored his program towards an older demographic, so that suited his audience. And I said, let's just go the complete opposite way and do it with youth, make it a little bit more um, contemporary so we can kind of keep up with the times, I guess. The music connection is pretty important. Filipinos are natural singers, dancers, we're very musical kind of people, so the music's got to be one of the first and foremost things. And then we talk about festivals, eating, you know, typical stuff, um, but it, has, it always has a different flavor to it. So a lot of people forget that the Philippines is actually multiple, it's thousands of islands conjured up together in the culture of the country. So everyone's got their own flavor to it as well. And whenever we have a religious festival like Santo Nino, um, a lot of our broadcasters will focus on that during that festival season, but they all come from different regions. So they'll go, oh, in the Visayas, this is what we do. Oh, no, in Mindanao, this is what we do. Filipinos like shout outs. So um, the traditional method, you know, the 40 year recipe is that you do birthdays, anniversary announcements, you do your shout outs that way. Uh, little pieces of news, um, you know, headline stories. My name is Andy Wlodarczak. I'm originally from Poland and I'm a senior technician with station 5 EBI FM and I came in March 1982 to Adelaide and I spent some time learning English and I joined also courses in electronics. I was doing work experience, I had placement in the station and position 
became vacant and I was asked if I can contribute with my skills and knowledge and then I joined EBI. Uh, in my role I'm responsible for maintaining and keeping on their studios, which we have four of them. Also I'm responsible for RF's radio frequency, part of the station which is located in Malmplofte. I have to say that we had a lot of problems with, during the storms with our equipment up there. Not long ago, just last year, we had problems with during the catastrophic storms and we lost our transmitter which went beyond the repair and we couldn't recover. So we had to purchase a new transmitter. In 1997, we decided that we have to rebuild the building because all the industrial shed where we had our equipment was in the lapilated state and the water was entering through the holes around and we decided that we have to get our funds and build a new building. We started at FM stations and we evolved to the station which is now present on, on the web. We are streaming. We are hoping that soon we will be podcasting. I think people kind of go, ah, oh, this is old and aging. Look, we still use CDs. When something gets so old, it no longer becomes terrible. It becomes retro. And I think we're kind of like, I mean, this Ukrainian electronic music I was looking at earlier. I mean, we've got access to stuff that we were able to get on Spotify. So this is a studio, we're in Studio 3 here, which was built when these premises were built in 1983. And this desk was put in place at that time. You'd have to check with uh, higher authorities, but I'm pretty sure this is the oldest desk still in operation uh, in Adelaide, um, dating from 1983. And we've, we've kept it running uh, amazingly. Our, uh, our technician, Andy, has done magic to keep it going. It's old, but it works. So, you know, I could confidently bang that panel like with all my might and it would still work. And I think that's very representative of um, the people we've got here. You know, you know, yes, we're older, but, you know, don't push them around. They'll, they're tough as nails. Today, we've got our, our senior Dutch ladies in. Um, they've been coming here for ever and a day. Um, there's about, uh, their numbers have dwindled down to about nine, but they range in age from uh, the youngest to probably be 60 up until about 94. One of the ladies once told me that once they were with 70 people and now they are a tiny little group of 10, 12 people. So that's the difference now, but they still hang on to each other. Our main aim is to try and get young people involved. Um, and that's very difficult because over the course, we missed, we missed a generation of broadcasters because the people who started the radio station, they were very proud of, and it was their, their programs and whatever. So they didn't tend to get their kids involved. Um, so we sort of missed a generation of, of broadcasters. Um, so now we're trying to get new and emerging groups, young people to come in and take the role over. Um, you know, we're involved with, you know, Thebit and Senior College. So we're trying to branch out to schools and colleges. We have a 10 week training course, which is um, you come out with a certificate at three certificate, four subjects, and try and open the doors to new, to new particularly young people. But just like with community TV, we're all about making sure that the next wave of professionals that come from a diverse background have the tools necessary. Because um, it's, it's unique set of challenges that um, maybe won't um, fit in the cookie cutter approach in the, main, you know, in, in the education system. So I like to see ourselves, position ourselves, kind of being that help and support to get people to that next level. In a ethnic 5EBI FM station, supporting all of those different 34 groups of ethnic groups, the 31 different languages. I want to emphasize the fact that we all really know very well that although we come from many and different ethnic backgrounds, we are all Australians. All 44 groups, this is their home. 
they use the radio station as their as their mail base. So every morning the mail comes in. So every group has their own locker. The lockers also house their CDs, their um, headphones, you know, their day to day things that they need. You know, so they don't have to keep bringing things in. We also have the auditorium. Um, which is available to all the groups for, uh, for functions, if they want to uphold a quiz night or um, you know, have their annual general meetings or whatever. That's part, all part of their membership. And it's important for them that the station is there for them um, when they need it. You know, we've got our Gaelic class, very tough language to learn, Gaelic. So you know, it's a dying art, so we try and keep those cultures alive wherever possible. All 44 members have access to the place, uh, once they become a member, this, this is their second home. It's their radio station. With 5EBI, the idea of giving a voice to ethnic minorities, that's what 5EBI does. We, we allow certain communities to have a voice and to express themselves and strengthen themselves by getting together and sharing their ideas, sharing their identity um, and strengthening their bond. The people are great um, and you know when when 200, 290 odd people walk through your door uh, every week um, it's just uh, it's it's never dull. Uh, there's always something happening, there's always new people, new groups to meet so. Uh, we've got 43 different cultures in one roof uh, broadcasting you know for most hours of the day. If you follow global geopolitics I would have thought they would not get along but everyone just leaves all that behind and they, they just talk about what they're doing here in terms of service. Dealing with people of different ethnic backgrounds, different cultures, which always enrich you when you meet people from <laughs> different countries. You learn something new always and this is something which I really cherish and I love it. When we have e events here, uh, you know, like uh, our, uh, our parties, our ball uh, coming up, we have Let's Dance, which is our annual ball. Um, events like that, where all the uh, broadcasters get together, um, it is, it is uh, just a, an amazing spectacle of, uh, of community spirit and, and people of all, uh, all cultures and, you know, on the globe, the, they come from such different places, but they come together and they're, and, and they're friends and they have lots to talk about because we're all doing radio here. We're all doing the same thing. You get five people from the East Turkestan community that rock up. Um, we'll open the door and say, yeah, come on in and start broadcasting, no problem. We have no formula about what determines a new and emerging community. Um, it's completely demand driven. So if your community wants it, we've got the airtime, no problems, off you go. And probably that's the biggest appeal that um, there's very little filter, you know, within reason, but there's very little filter. It's, it's a lot of creative freedom to, to express yourself, your culture and your community. The relevance of the, the radio station will continue. For how long? Nobody knows. With, with new technologies and younger generations coming through, how long will that, re that, that relevance be there? But, you know, uh, with 44 member groups at the moment, it still plays a very, very relevant role in South Australia and it will do for the next decade.